Is there a way to fix an arterial line if it is over damped or under damped? Yes, most of the time. So let's talk about it. For this week's tip of the week, we're going to be talking about art lines, how to tell if they're over damped versus under damped versus a normal waveform, as well as some troubleshooting fixes. It's super important to be able to identify a normal arterial line waveform in order to ensure that our arterial line is reading accurately. An A line that is over damped or under damped is not going to give you an accurate reading. Therefore, you are not going to be accurately charting, documenting, titrating medications off of that patient's blood pressure. First, let's cover normal arterial line waveform. For a normal arterial line waveform, you should see a peak and then a little notch right here. This is called the dichrotic notch, and this is the aortic valve closing. This was taken from my ICU crash course, but in order to ensure that an arterial line is optimally damped or accurately reading, we have to perform a square wave test. And how we do this is we pull the little pigtail flush or quickly flush the line. And then we evaluate to see how many oscillations occur, little bouncies as I like to call them, after your square wave. So this is where you start to flush. You see it kind of squares off. And you see these little bouncies right here. In a normal arterial line waveform, you should have 1.5 to two oscillations, AKA bouncies. In an over damped arterial line waveform, it's going to be more rounded, less pointy, so to speak. And typically you can't see that dichrotic notch. When you perform your square wave test, you will see less than 1.5 oscillations or bouncies, or you may not see any at all. So you can see here, there's the square wave and then there's no little bouncies or oscillations after the square wave test. In an overdamped waveform, your systolic blood pressure is going to be underestimated. And I don't know if this will make sense to everybody, but it makes sense in my brain because overdamped and underdamped always confused me. I thought that underdamped should be like this more minimal waveform and then overdamped should be this over exaggerated waveform. But how I like to remember it is if it's overdamped, we are like squishing it. We're dampening it. It is like we're minimizing it. And then under damped is we're not dampening it enough. So it's just super, super bouncy. In an under damped waveform, your systolic blood pressure is going to be over exaggerated. It is going to look very sharp and whipped, so to speak. You may notice extra little peaks or notches right here. And when you perform your square wave test, as you can probably guess, you're going to have greater than two oscillations or bouncies. You're going to see a bunch of these little little bouncy things after your square wave. Okay, but waveforms are great to be able to identify them, but how do we fix our arterial line if it is over damped or under damped? First thing you wanna do when you're troubleshooting an arterial line is always look at your patient, aka look at the patient's arterial line. Do you notice any kinks in the catheter? Maybe this right here is positioned a little off or it's loose, or maybe there's a backflow of blood or something in the tubing. While you're at it, make sure you go ahead and check your pressure bag. Make sure that the saline that's in the pressure bag is filled up enough, like it hasn't run dry, and make sure that your pressure bag is pumped up to 300 millimeters of mercury, aka you'll see this little green tab on your pressure bag pop up when it is correctly to the correct pressure. Check the tubing for any bubbles or kinks or anything like that. All that looks good. Make sure your arterial line is leveled appropriately at the flebostatic axis and zeroed on the monitor. Arterial lines are very positional, meaning that if your patient is moving their wrist around a lot, you're going to see your waveform get skewed. Sometimes you can get a little arm board or take a little towel and kind of wrap it under your patient's hand. I would say most of the time patients arterial lines like when their wrist is kind of extended back like this versus being folded over like this. If you have a patient that's alert and moving, it's just kind of difficult versus when you have a patient that's laying still, it's a little easier to get a more accurate reading. Check all the connections, make sure nothing's loose, perform a fast flush with the pigtail. You can flush the line or use like a little saline syringe and flush some saline in there if you don't have the vamp system. I also like to pull back on my arterial line to draw blood. And if you're meeting a bunch of resistance, then don't force it. But you should be able to get some blood flow back by gently putting a syringe on there or using your vamp system. So if everything checks out, you're leveled, you're zeroed, there's no kinks, there's no bubbles in there, everything is secure, you're able to pull back and flush, your pressure bag is good, there's saline in the pressure bag. The next thing I would go do is optimize your scale. 
every monitor is probably a little bit different, but somewhere on your monitor, there should be an option to optimum scale or optimize your scale. And this just changes the range of what your blood pressure is measured in. But this is kind of hard to see, but you can see here that your scale is measuring between zero and 150. So you can see that your waveform looks like this looks like an overdamped waveform. But most likely it's just reading on such a small scale because your blood pressure is low, 76 over 51. It looks so tiny. If you optimize your scale and let's say now you're reading from a range of 30 to 90, this waveform is going to look a lot better. And if you've done all those things and you're still not having a good waveform and an ac not an accurate reading for your blood pressure, you might just have a bad arterial line. They go bad, especially if they've been in for a while, your patient's moving a lot. So you may need to ask the provider if they would like it removed and exchanged. So those are my troubleshooting tips. I know this is kind of a longer video than normal, but hopefully it was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.